two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Hey, what's on tap podcast? I'm your host, Stefan. And I'm your host, Martin. And on this nice sunny day, we decided to uh, do something a little different this time. And not get drunk. It feels weird to, to yes, do that. Right? So weird. So, um, as we all know, people have been suffering through the corona epi- pandemic, as it were, and um, they've been drinking a lot. Yes. Like, a lot. Like, yes. supposedly, like, alcohol sales in certain areas are up anywhere from 300 to 500%. That is amazing. And the World <laughs> Health Organization is now considering it a big problem. Um, yep. I think the uh, cases of alcoholism might... Might go up after uh, AA. AA may have a lot of new members uh, come summer, um, so we thought you know it would be fun. We've seen that uh, a couple of breweries have really been kind of leaning into this non-alcoholic trend, especially in Sweden, and have released uh, a whole scale of like non-alcoholic beers. Um, I know like Tuold makes a ton of them. Um, McKellar makes uh, at least. Eight different yeah, uh, like non-alcoholic beers. There's the Drinking in the Sun series, and there's like two of those. There's their um, lime, raspberry, blueberry, lemon ones that they do, and then yep. there's uh, uh, some sort of yeah, there are some grapefruit more. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of different ones that they do. Um, Omnipolo just put out four new non-alcoholic beers, and we got we got one of those to try today. And um, Lervig out of Norway also has a uh, non-alcoholic beer too. Yep, and I think you got both of these at uh, Ica near uh, Möllevångstorget in Malmö. Exactly, yeah. With Möllans Folkis, the, yep. the regular store that has a surprisingly large assortment of beers. Yeah, they have a ton of um, non-alcoholic beers yes. uh, and low alcohol. So 3.5 is the shelf... Highest shelf ABV you can have in Sweden to sell um, over the counter. Uh, but those are usually not very good for the most part. I would say a lot of those 3.5 percenters I've not been that thrilled with. No. Um, but, uh, you know, breweries like Bleckeriet and um, um, Brewski have been putting out a lot of lower ABV beers in yep. that range. And so the quality is coming coming up quite a bit and it's not just like bad versions of horrible lagers to begin with no uh, I, I think it's a, a shame when when breweries take one of their regular beers and they just scale it down to fit the 3.5 because they're yeah. never as good um, but Breckerit is a good example because they've made entirely new beers I, I think that just happened to fit the 3.5 yeah so they I think so too to that market instead yeah. And I've seen a few recreate beers there that I haven't seen anywhere else. Yeah. That's pretty nice, actually. Yeah, there were a couple of the beers I saw there that I hadn't seen anywhere yeah. else. Um, Nordic uh, Kiwi Brewers. Yeah. They have a mountain, Misty Mountain Haze, I think it was called, which is a 3.5%. Yeah, but they're not as good. It was, not a, it was supposed to be like a hazy IPA, and I'm like... No, it didn't fit any of those. I mean, it was hazy, but other than that, it did not fit any other of the those areas. No, um, but these yeah. particular beers are zero or zero point three. Zero point three percent. Yeah. yeah. So, so, this is, so we'll start with no we're, no worries. Yep. Uh, it is alcohol free. Comes in at zero point five percent. So it's um, there's more alcohol in your standard cough medicine than yeah. what is in this beer, um, and best before. Um, October 30th of this year other than that I really can't tell you much it doesn't really say anything there's no descriptive text other than uh, ingredients yep so what do you think how's it smell uh, f- a little bit floral very malty mm-hmm. very sweet uh, I have to be honest I'm not really digging the aroma on this one I don't know for me it looks like a hazy pale L. Sure, it, the, the appearance is just right. It smells... <laughs> the smell is a little funky. Uh, he, he says after coughing. Well... <laughs> yeah, it, 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 like 
like a, bit, a little bit cardboard, multi. The the aroma is not winning me over. Let's right, let's try cheers, this. Let's get cheers. This. So it tastes a little bit like dishwater, like a, a soapy, uh, muddy dishwater. It's not a good, it's not a good flavor. Um, At first I thought, that's not bad, it's kind of sour, there's a little tartness um, to it. It's not supposed to. But then the aftertaste is kind of like, um, yeah, it's like soapy, like butterscotch or, yeah. off, it's a lot of off flavors in this. I have to agree with you. Um, and then the the longer the aftertaste goes, the worse it gets. Yes. It's, um, oh, wow. That's, <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> it's almost like I need some water to clean my palate because it's, yeah. it is bad. <laughs> so sometimes we would say, ah, this, we're drinking this in the wrong setting. It should mm-hmm. be drank in the sun with the wind in your hair, uh, on, and a falcon on your wrist on the open steps. But this, <laughs> this is not the case here. No. I don't think this would this would just make your uh, your place in the sun a bit more sad. For me, this feels like one of these beers that they uh, the brewery just went. Yeah, it's an alcoholic. It'll it'll be good enough. Yeah. <laughs> these people don't care. Yeah, they're drinking. If, if they cared, they wouldn't be drinking non alcoholic to begin with. <laughs> Maybe I I've actually tried this once before and I liked it more. Than really, it. all right. Um. But this is gonna get a low rating for me. Yeah, I am not. Uh, I am not loving this on any, on any level. In fact, this is. I can only think of one, um, non-alcoholic beer I've liked less than this, and that is the uh, the Brew Dog. Um, nanny State. Nanny State, which for me is just <laughs> undrinkable. Oh my God, that is that is horrible. Um, so this is slightly better than Nanny State, but not yeah. not by much. <laughs> uh, I guess if given a choice, I would be I would pick No Worries over uh, Nanny State, but not not by much. Have yeah. you tried the new um, Punk AF? Uh, I think so. I don't remember it. So so maybe, but right. if I did, it wasn't anything to 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 keep in memory. Do you but have just, a speaking of Nanny State in two thousand eight? Uh, two acquaintances got married and they were they didn't drink alcohol mm-hmm. and they wanted their wedding to be uh, alcohol free yeah uh, so they they knew what to get for like non-alcoholic wine and other drinks mm-hmm. and, but they didn't know about beer so they asked me and I at that point I could only direct them to Nanny State right because the alternatives for 0% beer was like Falcon 0% beer which yeah. tasted like uh, bre- um, water that ha- bread put bread in water for like a, a day and then you taste it and you go yeasty bready disgusting yeah. so I directed them to Nanny State and I remember people really liking it at this wedding I can see that they, they were going yeah. oh wow this non-alcoholic beer actually tastes something but Nanny State is not a good non-alcoholic no. beer. It was just the only thing that had any hops right. in 2008. Well, I think that the uh, Heineken non-alcoholic is supposed to be pretty good. But I've never tried it. I've tried it. It's just boring. Well, I it's mean... It's just the same bready water. Yeah. Any of the lagers, I think, are pretty yeah. pretty hot trash. But this one, this beer, no worries. I'm giving a 0.5 today. I, I will not drink more of this. This is I'm, disgusting. I'm right there with you. 0.5. I was going to go one, but no, it's not worth it. No. Um, okay. So let's take a break. Yep. And we'll come back and try the Omnipolo beer. This is going to be better after the break. Okay. <clears throat> so next up is the Ustkaka from... Omnipolo, which is a... Nice pronunciation. Thank you. Uh, Pale ale brewed with lingonberries inspired by classic Swedish cheesecake. Yes. I'm very excited about this. Swedish cheesecake is very different from American cheesecake. It is. You know that, right? I do know that. So much so that I'm not even sure I want to call it cheesecake. (laughs) It's a cake of cheese. Yes. Yes. 
This smells really good. This smells Smith. like vanilla. This smells like Omnipolo's 8% beers. It does. Also it, fruit uh, yeah. vanilla beers. So they really nailed the aroma on this yeah. one. I will say that online, um, when, I, when you go to Untapped and you look at the ratings for these, they haven't been as high as I thought they would be. I think they've been somewhere around 3 to 3.5. Yeah, but we haven't tasted it yet. I know we haven't. But I'm just saying that I had very high hopes for these. But then when I've read some of the reviews, I've been kind of like, well, maybe I need to lower my expectations a little bit. Except for the blueberry one, which I couldn't get my hands on. <laughs> All right. Well, cheers. It smells amazing. It actually. does. And now, honestly, what I love is it looks like a beer. I mean, if you put it in your glass and you muddle it a little bit and swish it around, it just foams right up. There's this residual um, lacing on the glass. It just looks absolutely beautiful. Yes. So this one tastes amazing as well. Holy crap. Yes. If <laughs> anyone ever says... Oh, but this isn't beer. Then the eight percent Omnipolo um, pastry sours shouldn't be beer as either. No. Oh my God, this is so lingonberry. Yes. This just tastes like fresh lingonberry and vanilla. And vanilla. This is so good. <laughs> uh, be, be, because before we rate them, I think we just just need to acknowledge that we consider pastry sours to be beer. Of course. Yes. Yes. Uh, because this tastes like a, a really good pastry sour, mm -hmm. and it could ha just as e have easily been six, seven, eight percent. Yeah. Because this is what they it, taste. You know, honestly, if you were to put this up against one of the Bianca, Mango, yes. Goza, whatever beers, <laughs> I probably would not be able to tell much of a difference. No. Because this is so such a rich mouthfill. It's so tasty. Yes. Oh, it's so good. Um. This is exactly what a non-alcoholic beer should be. Uh, mm -hmm. A non-alcoholic version of something that has alcohol, mm -hmm. but without sacrificing too much of, of yeah. the essence or the flavor. And what I really like about it, it doesn't taste like a weird soda. No. Like a lot of times when you get these 0% these alcohol beers, they don't really taste like beer. They taste more like... Um, like a soft drink. Yeah. And I don't want a soft drink. I want um, I want a beer. Yes. Or something that makes me feel like I'm drinking a beer. And this this is really good. <laughs> so there are there are diff different ways to accomplish a non-alcoholic beer. Mm -hmm. You can either like brew it but only brew it up to 0 0.3. <laughs> or, like mm -hmm. you never you never really brew it. Yeah. You can also de-alcoholize. Right. I, I don't know the the, technical the company terms. I used to work for makes a, a de-alcoholization unit. Wow. So it's actually a unit that removes the alcohol from the uh, from the, the beer. Yes. Yeah. And I would assume that you, you still keep some of the beer flavors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but many of the, the non-alcoholic like pale ales and stuff I've had that, that had that done to them, they tasted awful. They like, yeah. Uh, a super pale version of, of themselves. Yeah. So when it comes to non-alcoholic beer, is there a style that you tend to go for? Is it like a, a sour or um, maybe uh, something with Brett or something that's got... Are we including up to 3.5? Because we're in Sweden. Mm -hmm. Is In my mind, it's so connected to where I can buy them. Mm -hmm. uh, so... I can buy the 0% ones at the same place as the 3.5% ones. True. So I tend to clump them together. And then I always go for sours. Yeah. Because... They like, just work better. Yes, like the yeah. Brickeriate ones. The, their 3.4% sours are just as good as their 5%. Yeah. There's basically no difference. Yeah. But with a 3% IPA, you are missing so much of the important... Mouthfeel, taste, aftertaste, aroma. You're missing mm -hmm. so many of the elements that they always fall short for me. Yeah. I, I'm kind of the same way. I always go for uh, sours when it comes to uh, low alcohol beers because they just, you're able to get so much of that flavor in. And a lot of times, uh, like certain styles, their base is like 4% anyway. So to get to a 3.5, it's not that hard to do. No. Um, so, yeah, no, I. I, uh, I I go tend to go sours as well, because like lagers, stouts, uh, 
They just IPAs, Pale Ales. Yeah. They just don't work. The only one I think that kind of works is drinking in the sun from a keller. Uh, yeah, sure. I think that's the only one. That, or the um, Ambler. No, no, I did not like the Ambler. You didn't like Ambler? That's, that's the one. That's like a, a, a low alcohol red ale or something. Exactly. Blah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, blah. No. What's, no the, what's the other? It's not the drinking in the sun. Is it called drinking in winter or something like that? Drinking in the snow or something like that? Yes. Yeah. That's also the McKellar. Yeah. Uh, not 0.3%. They, they are completely those, passable. They, they, yeah, yeah. Both of those are, they work. Yeah. Whereas a lot of other beers of the caliber are just complete hot trash. Yes. But I mean, with, with stouts, I don't even like 5% stouts. Mm. I think those are watery messes. I mean, they're almost a Baltic porter at that point. Uh, I, I like stronger Baltic porters. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think it just, when it comes to these roasty beers, yeah. uh, I just don't like, well, like them. Guinness, Guinness is a normally, it's a 4.5% beer. Uh, yes, but Guinness has m- other things going for yeah. it. Same thing with the uh, uh, Murphy's uh, Irish Stout and yeah. things like that. Those are uh, those are low alcohol, lower alcohol beers when you think sure. you're going to get like a 68%, it's really in the 3.8 to 4.5% yeah, sure. uh, on average. So what are you giving this beer? Uh, man, this really knocked my socks off. I'm going to give it a four. I am as well. I just been completely blown away by how good this is. The um, aftertaste actually uh, has a little bit of the dryness from an actual lingonberry. I would say, what's crazy is the like first mouthfeel, it just like, the lingonberry was just overwhelmingly like, and so for yeah. people that don't live in Sweden that don't know what lingonberry is, if you're drinking cranberry juice, it's like a tartar version of cranberry juice yeah that's a good um, uh, good explanation so it like it just finishes and it's just got this nice slightly vanilla but like this really uh, i guess bitter is the way to go uh lingonberry uh freshness to it that i didn't expect to get but anyone who likes uh lambics and mm-hmm. has been following Drifontaine and should know about lingonberries because they released a lingonberry lambic for the Swedish market yes called Rode Bosbes yep together with a blueberry one Blaue Bosbes yep. so there's no there's no excuse for not knowing about lingonberries anymore. nope none, none at all all right that wraps up this non-alcoholic edition yes of um, what's on tap podcast we probably won't do one of these again for a long time who knows who knows <laughs> there may be another like amazing collection of uh, of beers that we, we maybe, a, on. maybe after we've recorded this episode, the World Health Organization just bans all alcohol. Can you imagine what kind of global upheaval it would be if like they just banned alcohol? Yeah, people would lose their mind. <laughs> so that'll never happen. Maybe. <laughs> well, you got to have the alcohol because that's like the uh, opiate for the masses. As long as you can keep people in place with alcohol, they'll be fine. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> keep in mind that uh, in the twenties, Sweden had a vote on whether yeah. we should become, uh, we should have prohibition. Yeah, and it was forty nine percent said we should ban all alcohol permanently, yeah. and fifty one percent said to keep it. Yes. So we we were so close to having American style prohibition, but voluntarily. Yeah. American style prohibition was kind of pushed. It was on the on the masses. <laughs> So, don't never say never. I know. I, I don't think... I think if they were to do that vote again, it would not be nearly as close. No. Uh, and if if it's banned, our podcast will become a relic of the old times. Exactly. Put in a museum and uh, uh, people would listen to it and go, this is how barbarians... Acted. These are the pro- proponents of barbarism before we became cultured and civilized. Mm. God, it's just so good. Yes. All right. So you can find us online at whatsontappodcast.com, Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube. World Health Organization slash What's On Tap Podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah we, are, we are a public service there. Yes. Uh, we are Pod uh, Syndicate and... I thought yeah. you were going to say we are podpeople.com. We are podpeople. just people. reveal we are our po- secret. <laughs> you can never reveal that secret. No. Okay, until next time. podcast is part of the Pop Syndicate Valley. 
more criminally compelling shows, articles and conversations, head to wearepodsyndicate.com.